There are a lot of headlines at the moment about how the property market has slowed right down. And that is completely true. But it's at times like this that you often get the most interesting opportunities. And there's a particular opportunity that we get to see because of what we do, but we haven't seen it talked about anywhere else and it might be interesting for you. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what that opportunity is, how it's come about, and then importantly, exactly what you can do to take advantage of it if you want to. So this opportunity is to do with new build property. And I know that some people just don't like new builds. And it's true, you do have to be careful with new builds. There are things to watch out for. We've actually done a whole separate video about that, which we'll link to in the description. But there's also this kind of general idea of like the new build premium, that new builds are overpriced, that they don't perform so well. If you look at the land registry data, new builds have actually grown by 67% over the last 10 years compared to 51% for existing properties. But I'm not here to convince you. I've bought new builds recently personally, it works for me, but what works for one person isn't necessarily gonna work for another. So if it's just not your thing, fair enough, but stick around anyway, because at the end, there are some principles that you can apply to other types of investing as well. So why has this opportunity come about? Well, it's for two reasons. The first is that the help to buy scheme has finally come to an end. Help to buy has been running for years. Every time it's supposed to end, it gets extended. But this time, finally, it hasn't been extended. So it officially ends next year, but it's already too late to take advantage of it. This is a big deal for developers because that's been an outlet for a lot of their stock over the last however many years. They've been able to sell it to first time buyers using this scheme and now suddenly they can't anymore. The other reason this has come about is because of the slowdown in the market. Buyer demand has decreased by 44% since mid-September, which is really pretty dramatic. Dramatic, but only a problem if you need to sell your property. The property market slowing down, even prices falling, isn't a big deal unless you're planning on selling your property. And many people can be selective about when they do choose to sell. That's why you see when the market is weak and especially when prices are falling, there are actually fewer transactions than usual because a lot of people just won't list their property, they'll stay put. In some situations though, people need to sell and you often hear about the three Ds that drive that, death, divorce and debt. But to that we can add a fourth one, developers. Developers over the medium term can respond to the market. So what you'll often see is if demand is falling, the developers will slow down the rate at which they build houses because they want just enough coming to the market to meet the demand. They don't want to be flooding the market and therefore forcing their own prices down. So in the medium term, they have some control, but in the short term, they don't. They're either going to have stock that is underway, the building is happening, they can't really stop it and just leave it half finished, and that's going to come to market at some point. And they've also got some stock that's finished and it's just sitting there. So the slowdown that's happening now is bad news for developers. And you can see this in the share price of the ones that are publicly listed. You can see it in the stock price of Persimmon, Taylor Wimpy and Barrett. It's not just the big developers. Those are the ones where you can see it affecting their share price, but it's happening at all levels. And this has created a window of opportunity. That window only opened a couple of months ago and it's not gonna stay open forever. But for now, the window is open and it presents a really interesting opportunity. It's interesting for a few different reasons. The obvious reason is that you can go and negotiate a better deal with them, potentially. So this is what we do. We speak to developers, we offer to take stock off them in bulk, and in return, we want a discount. And earlier in the year, we were talking to developers and having to really, really fight to get up to say like a seven or 8% discount. That was sort of as high as we were getting. There were loads of developers who wouldn't go past 5% or wouldn't give us any discount at all because they were so confident about making their sales. That has changed now. Like I say, we've got developers coming back to us, maybe those who we couldn't agree a deal with six months ago, even three months ago, who are now coming back and showing an interest and giving us the level of discount that we want. And of course, we're going and repricing the deal to make sure that the discount is still from a genuine market value. So that's the obvious benefit, but there are a couple of others as well. So new build stock happens to be typically the type of property that everyone wants right now on the rental market. So it tends to be more energy efficient, which is something that people are very focused on right now. 
It also tends to be smaller. That's something that people want. A lot of people are choosing to live alone because if they're working from home, it's easier for them to do that and maybe have a spare bedroom if they can to work from. They also tend to be in city centers or give easy access to city centers. And again, that's something that's really in demand for rentals at the moment because of people returning to the office, at least some of the time, because of people wanting the nightlife again. You're seeing rent prices in places like London, Birmingham and Manchester in particular absolutely rocketing at the moment because that's where people want to be. And that just happens to be, for the large part, where this stock is as well. The other benefit that's particularly interesting at the moment is it means you get to sit out the mortgage chaos that's going on. So you'll be aware of everything that's happened with mortgages recently. We recorded a couple of videos about it for the channel, we'll link to them below, but we believe that mortgage rates are gonna come down from where they are now, even though the base rate will go up. We believe that stress tests will come down. We believe that there'll be more products on the market as lenders have kind of had a chance to adjust. And in a few months time, the mortgage market is going to be a much kinder place than it has been for the last few months. If you're buying something that hasn't been completed yet, then what that can mean is you can lock in the price today while the market is relatively weak and you can get a strong deal. But you won't have to arrange a mortgage until later when the market has probably improved. How do you actually take advantage of this? There are a few different ways. One thing you can do is look out for right move listings where there are clearly multiple listings in the same development or block. You can normally see this either by the address or the fact that all the descriptions or the photos are very similar. You can pretty much sniff it out. And even if you only see three or five, there could actually be more than that because if there are 100 units available, no one's going to put all 100 of them up on right move because it would be really obvious that there are lots of them. So even if you just see a few, there could actually be more than that. And that means you can then target them to approach them and try to get yourself a deal because now you understand the position that they might be in. So you can contact the agent that's on the listing. If there are multiple agents against different listings in the same development, you can contact all of them and maybe play them off against each other. And with a bit of research, you can find out who the developer is and potentially go directly to them. Sometimes that's something they're open to, sometimes it's not. Another thing you can do is actually get out and about and find sites that you can see that aren't listed on the portals for whatever reason. Maybe it's too early, it's too early in the build, or there's some other reason where they're not listed. Then you can find out who the developer is and have a conversation. Both of those will work for both stock that's completed, sitting there waiting to be sold, and for developments that are still under construction. That'll work for both. Another thing you can do to try and get things even earlier in the process is actually go through local planning applications, try and find out who's got planning and get to them if you can figure out what their plans are. If you can get a few people together and offer to take multiple units off them and sort of get a bit of a bulk deal for an even better discount, then that's absolutely something you can do as well. You don't have to do that, but it can help you get an even better price. When you are having those conversations, go in low, be prepared to be told no, but then be persistent, keep coming back. Like I said, this is something that we're seeing all the time at the moment. We have having people coming back to us saying maybe, or even quite an enthusiastic yes to things that they'd said quite a firm no to in the not too distant past. So even a month in the current market can make a difference between a no and a yes. So following up is super important. Of course, there are companies who you can work with who do this for you. That's what we do, and we'll link to our service in the description. But you don't have to work with us. You don't have to work with anyone. You can do this yourself. Everything I've just told you is in large part what we do. We're just able to do it at a bigger scale, and we've got lots of relationships already. So we get people coming to us and we're able to have conversations that you wouldn't be. But you can still absolutely do this yourself, and I hear quite regularly from people who do. Of course, we're going to get comments like, but the market's about to crash. Why would you buy anything right now? You're going to end up in negative equity. You could just wait a year and everything will be cheaper. And maybe that's your opinion. It might be right. It might not be. We don't have to get into a debate about that. Obviously, if you think that the market is about to crash, then none of this applies. It's not going to be relevant to you. But maybe this particular strategy isn't right for you. Maybe, for example, you're looking for refurb projects or opportunities to add value, which of course there won't be with new stock. In that case, watch this video next because there are plenty of other things you can do to take advantage of the current market. And we run through a lot of them in this video, including telling you about a couple of tools that I personally couldn't live without, but you may not know about.